The Redeemer has risen. I'm going to do a quick cast of this Highlands game. I'm actually going to decide whether or not to send this to Cybert after this, but you guys can be the judge because it was by far the most intense game I've played this year and maybe last year. All right, guys, a little bit of context. I played this unknown player yesterday and I had this amazing game versus him. Uh, my immediate reaction after this game was, oh my God, oh my God, it's the best game of the year, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if it really was, but he told me he's a noob. Clearly he isn't. I went to go cast this game and it, it was a great game, guys, to be honest. Uh, a lot of things happened in this and without spoiling it and the game after, I want you all to enjoy these two games the last game in this video was between me and Drive. I decided to cast that one as well because, yeah, it, it was just a great game as well. Memorable for sure. So I guess what I could say is these two games are very memorable games and I wanted to give my own take on them. So yeah, guys, hope you all enjoy my commentary on this. Anyways, this is going to be Master Leave. Peace out. Okay, so this is going to be on Tournament Highlands between my opponent uh, UX No and myself. I'm playing as the GDI. UX No is also as the GDI. We have no idea who this guy is. I checked his IP address, but nothing gives me any indication that it could be someone who's active. Uh, it has to be someone who's active though. You can't be this freaking good and not be active. It's just impossible. Anyway, so I'm GDI, he's with GDI, and I felt I was on point this game. I was not streaming. This was me just playing the game. I was laser focused on winning this. And I really wanted to have a great match, and that's what happened. Uh, this this match just blew my mind. Uh, what can I say? It's reminded me of uh, the old days. Now, it could be Unleashed, though. I don't know. I'll leave you guys to be the judge of who this is. Anyways, he knows what scouting's all about. Pulls back from that fight. Probably should have just taken it, damaged the rifle squads. I'm going to split my rifles off here just so I can get a glimpse of what's going on in his base because quite frankly, I don't know who this guy is. So I'm gonna try and scout him because he could be going for like Walker all-ins. You don't know uh, what kind of play he's gonna have. He seems to have a hunch of what I'm doing because the games before I was uh, doing rig rushes. So he's probably going to go ahead and scout for the rig rush. That's why if you see him go for Pitbull, that's because the, the previous game I did a, I think it's a fluke. No aggressive panda. By the way, I am streaming this game, but I'm not sure if I'm going to post this to YouTube. I guess we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out what the uh, panda thinks about the game afterwards. Is this a replay? Indeed, it is a replay. I'm casting my own game between UX No and myself. And it's... I don't know, that's the thing. It, he, UX no, thinks that I know, but really, I don't know. He's got me fooled here. He's going to be going ahead with the expansion. I am going for one as well, though I wanted to go for a rig once again, but I decided, in, because I did the rig rush the previous game, I'm going to just go for orcas and pipples like Green Zero did in the tournament. Because I was pretty impressed with that build. I wanted to give it a shot against another GDI. I've seen Green Zero himself pull this off against GDI. So we're going to see uh, if I can mimic Green Zero. I'm going to go for this command post. I think my opponent scouted this though. Yeah, he can see everything is going on my base. And as a result, he's going for a double war factory. He sees that my expansion is super early or late. So this is not a bad idea, guys. If you see your opponent go for two war factories after scouting as such a late expansion as this, this is a really good idea. Why do you reverse move MCB? Because um, enemy vehicles can't uh, block it with the S command. And this is really pain in the ass, by the way. He went for five, six pipples. Uh, I went for a Bloodhounds rush. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. It's This is new, blah, 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 blah. But I get two veteran Bloodhounds and two pipples. So I get to kill his infantry at the expansion while punishing his third. But he didn't build a third. Instead, he built a second war factory. Uh, he's going to push back these pitbulls, and this is a huge loss for me because my opponent here, he's harvesting. He's on four harvesters, doing this uh, double war factor in four halves, which is really uncharacteristic uh, this uh, early. Actually, sending a blue harvester to the blue Tiberium. So this guy, man, already, you're seeing him do things that you wouldn't see from a noob. Like he's taking blue Tiberium behind a super aggressive pitbull attack. 
He's not taking the blue tier at the top, however, but he's got plenty of pipples out on the field. I've got four orcas. I managed to pump four orcas out. And because I saw that his pipples are going to my base, I'm just going to ignore those, make a bunch of predator tanks and missiles, and I don't think that my opponent is going to uh, get a glimpse of these orcas here. Now, he may do because he's going in that direction with his pits. He's going to go back to base now. There's a bit pitbulls back at home, though, which I was not too happy to see. And this is going to make my orcas useless. Now, guys, me making four orcas and not doing any damage here is hugely... <laughs> this is horrible for me. I've, I've lost my bloodhounds and my orcas were shut down completely. My opponent has a third on his rev. I'm going to get, get that pitbull. Now, this is going to be exposed. So I'm going to quickly take out this harvester. He was hoping to sandwich in these orcas, but man, I threaded the freaking needle here. The absolute needle. I threaded it. Look at that. That's an absolute thread there. Perfect threading. Got through all those pit bulls. He was trying to get me. Would have been disastrous if I was like one centimeter over to the right or left. But the orcas do escape. And yeah, those orcas live for another day. That's, uh, that's the first clutch moment of this game, guys. The first. Making a bunch of predator tanks and I'm scattering them all over the map. I've got pred tanks over here. I've got pred tanks over here. I've got some forces up here in the top as well. Uh, just to defend my uh, airfield. Some forces at his expansion. There's stuff over here killing harvesters. There's literally everything going on in this game. Pitbull's trying to get into this base but he's going to lose all of his pits. This orca dodge was epic. Now this, he didn't see these pitbulls die. Because I'm freaking scattered all over the place does uh, drive these pitbulls back there he's got eco down i have only got one refinery so i'm still behind in this game trying to outplay him with uh multitasking didn't see those pitbulls blow up so that's his bad i needed that though because my freaking orcas aren't doing anything they just killed one harvester but the expenditure of this needs to amount to more than one harvester being destroyed uh pits going down over there and you can see there's so many battle markers in this game it's just ridiculous so uh, I, I, I just can't tell you everything that's going on currently. The orcas are moving over at the top of the map. And there's Pred's APCs in the middle to uh, defend. Do snipe that harvester in conjunction with the orca strike. Not something you see every day. I coordinated that just perfectly. Harvester does live. Pitbulls do uh, try to scare those orcas back. But the orca control for myself here um, has been really... Well, good. I haven't done this in ages, guys. Look, I'm even splitting Orca's rockets off so I don't overkill my opponent's har harvesters. So, yeah, he's going to push this attack back. He's going for more harvesters. He's getting that one healed up there. Pitbull's going to defend his base. I'm going to have a second ref on my expansion now. And I'm going for Shatterer tanks because I know that he's building infantry and tier 1. So, you know, having the odd Shatterer tank with your army composition is a good thing. So he's going to try ahead and go for a counter-attack, moving out with his pit bulls. My orcas uh, getting rearmed and reloaded. There's a couple of harvesters here that are just wandering around, minding their own business. Predator tanks up here going to defend the blue tip, but that's going to leave an opening for the pit bulls to go ahead and take out my orcas. Now my harvester was going to the base, but those pit bulls were uh, in there between the ref and his army, so I had to move them back towards my army. The Return to base command with this harvester didn't work for some reason. Okay, so I killed this pred here. Uh, these orcas, I'm trying to just use these as surgically as possible. I'm going to take out these forces and my opponent's going to go to the bottom with those pitbulls. I'm trying to get the most out of these as humanly possible. Uh, he's going to be taking out behind this. I was thinking in this moment in time that he's going for... Uh, what do you mean it's blood? I don't think it's blood, man. What are you talking about? I, I don't think you're you're correct there. Nonetheless, those going to get healed up. I'm going for slingshots because I'm anticipating that there'll be a uh, transition to air because I'm going for these predator tanks and infantry. And usually, what players do is they go for uh, they go for a bunch of hammerheads to counter this. Don't want to lose these slingshots though, just in case that is a thing. Pipples going to the bottom. Actually, that's his Pipples. There he is. He's leeching that Tiberium. He's going to get himself a Harvester kill. And he's going to push my attack back as well. Orcas do live still. Every Smurf is blood at some point. Now, I don't know, man. I, I can't remember blood being this good. 
So he kills my harvester. He's going to the top of the map here. The rig is out, but I think I didn't watch this. I'm going to get that destroyed. I made a rig so I could heal my army in the top. Orc is trying to get into the base to kill his harvester, but I don't manage to get anything. He's got himself pretty defended there. Losing the orcas now. He's got pipples. He did kill a harvester. Uh, he's over here. Going to destroy my airfield. And moving across the map here to try and get those pipples because if I can clean those up then the orcas are going to be free to you know ravage his harvesters once again i also think it's blood hmm questionable though you never know guys it doesn't matter who it is it was a really good game so he's going to take out actually i got put a sonic emitter there just just get these forces back i'm surprised given the position i'm in right now that it wasn't an easy um game to win Mind you, he does have har he has harvested more Tiberium than me, so it's likely that he was uh, floating a lot of cash. He's going for more pipples. Orcas were destroyed. I'm going to bring in sniper teams because I, at this point I was like, mm, I can't get the scout off in his base. I used my radar scan. He's probably going for infantry. So I've got sniper teams and slingshots. Putting my slingshots nearby the snipers so I can kill the hammerheads because I want those uh, hammerheads to be uh, destroyed if they are a thing. Wolf actually uh, taking some damage in the back. And things have kind of cooled down for a little bit. I'm going to pull back my forces. And both of us have a Marv currently. I'm moving in with my MCV. Yeah, I, I was told that it was Technique by uh, Senna. Because Senna had a hunch that it was. Uh, it, I can't remember Blood playing this way. I mean, I would have known if it was Blood Man. So... I'm going to try and get this MCV on the terrain. You can see how on point I am. I'm never usually this on point. I know my opponent's MCV is about to expand, so I'm going straight for it to see if I can delay it for as long as possible. He's got mortars on his pit bulls now, so he's going to be able to uh, kill uh, this, the odd infantry that he comes across. Kills a harvester down here, so that's unfortunate for me. I'm still... Actually, I did clean up this force there. Fight's going to heat up in the middle of the map now. I do get myself a harvester, so one for one. We're going to trade... A harvester. There is a sonic emitter though, which I left it behind. Pipples won't get uh, too far into that base. Orcas ravaging more harvesters. A third one poised to go down. Actually, no, not quite. I only get two there, which is unfortunate. Uh, Pipples still causing me problems. Marv in the middle of the map. Myself, uh, I've also been able to harvest this. Uh, he's putting down AA batteries because those orcas haven't had a real answer yet. Uh, Okay, so this is really explains how he's got the income, but I've got a mammoth tank here, man, to get his harvesters off this field. I, I could, I don't understand how I'm so on point here. It's it's just, I'm not making any errors at all. Okay, here comes a truck wave on his Marv. Uh, my juggernauts are in perfect position for this because his jogs are way out of range. I'm moving my harvesters out of view and my Marv's going to take this one out. And by the way, I do have a sniper team in the back of his base because I wanted to kill his uh, tier 4 before I uh, uh, he uses his support power so I'm going to take out his uh, uh, space command uplink the moment this happens which is absolutely insane in this stage of the game so I take that out just after he uses the support power the Marv goes down uh, both of us use the zone trooper drop pod uh, I the, here's, here's a really, really annoying to contend with. I'm going to use all, lose all my juggernauts to this. I don't have AP ammo on my towers. Actually, I do have AP ammo. Never mind. He's going to jump jet back and avoid those two, three juggernauts in the middle of the map now. Rocket squad's in the top. Going to take out this mammoth tank guarding the blue Tiberium. I lose all my zone troopers. I've only got one juggernaut left. And he's powering through now with like five juggernauts. I have nothing to defend against those. He's got plenty of eco. Neither one of us have a Marv, so, you know, at this point in time, you would probably quit the game. You say, okay, GG, seeing all this in the middle of the map. But I had other ideas, because I'm going for, or what I will go for soon, is a bunch of hammerheads. Does use the scan just to see what's going on here. He maybe didn't know that I had so little. But he can go back for that blue tip of all of these harvesters now. Man. That's an insane amount of eco that he's going to get down soon. He's going to move in with his MCV. I've got two orcas. One does get shot down by the missile squads. I don't think I have enough ammunition to even kill a singular harvester with those. But I'm trying to go for a last ditch hammerhead unleashed style. You know, UA style. That's what Unleashed did back in the day. 
And it really should be obvious at this point, though. I guess it kind of wasn't. He thought that it was definitely over. And you can actually pump out four hammerheads rather quickly. I've got a couple of zone troopers left over from that engagement and from the uh, tier 4 drop pod support power. So I'm going to garrison up all of these hammerheads with the zone troopers. And even then, it's just going to require a miracle, really. He should have gone for maybe hammerheads, but looking at his point of view, I don't think he had any support powers to know. I mean, he could probably guess what was coming. He's moving in with his juggernauts now. Going for missile squads. He sees the commando. He sees the um, B-35 Ox, so maybe he should have made some hammerheads. Some uh, slingshots with tungsten. So I've got all these hammerheads here. Now, even with the element of surprise, it's actually going to take a lot more than that to come through. So I'm going to move in with these hammerheads here. I was expecting him to have more anti-air than he did. He's going to build some double-A now. Just one double-A battery will scare back these hammerheads. And I'm going to go straight for his command post. Uh, he sees them now. He's panicking. Going to make a couple slingshots, I would imagine. While this is all happening, I did call in some sniper teams to clean up this infantry. There's five juggernauts here going to wreck my base. I'm going to go over here, go straight for the command post, take that one out so he can't uh, make any anti-air. Get the tier 3 as well just to stop Tungsten if that were upgrading. And he's going to have to rebuild his command post or go to Pitbulls, but Pitbulls are kind of useless against uh, zone heads. I'm going to lose all my base currently to these Juggernauts. And he does have an expansion here in the middle of the map. I'm trying to kill these uh, Pitbulls. These four Hammerheads are basically everything that I have left in this game and two Juggernauts. Those are shelling the base. Uh, but those zone troopers can just go in and kill those juggernauts if you really wanted to. Yeah, double A comes down here. Now this this is really, really close. I do lose one of the hammerheads. One of these has zone troopers in it, which is almost dead as well. So I, I can't really sit here. He does get out two more uh, slingshots. I'm losing all my build now. I don't have any production besides... Uh, airfield so his juggernauts can just move in and deal with those though my hammerheads are coming in those are pretty low on health as mentioned he's moving in with his slingshots and uh, these are really hard to kite by the way uh, one error with these and i'm going to lose this game so yeah i'm as you can see i'm microing back these slingshots I do lose one of the hammerheads i'm trying to split these off because guys you can't these hammerheads are one shot away from death so I'm using this hammerhead that's uh, high on health to try to kite these ones. Slingshot's getting kited. That singular hammerhead there is. I move that one forward, which is on full health, to kill that slingshot. Moving that one back because it's used its volley. And there's two more slingshots here. So I'm going in for those, pulling those hammerheads back. Moving that one back as well. That slingshot goes down. That's GG, I think. No, not quite. It's not over yet, guys. You still got a couple left, but I've got out of the... The brink of that, that was ultra close. He lost his ref to the Juggernauts, by the way. Does have eco still and a command post. He can still spam anti-air. Uh, I only have hammerheads left, so he just ne needs to make uh, tongues, slingshots. But he doesn't have tungsten shells, so really it's a much easier task for me now. Killing these slingshots. I do kill the MCV instantly. Those ha Even if he had deployed that man, that would have just been dead meat there. Versus all these zone heads. Sniper team's going to town on these zone troopers i do pull that one back to base with the low health in it and slingshots man he does get one man they're still hard to kite like as i said when i had those four hammerheads on like one health it, it, it could have been over easily there for me and yeah that's that's i, I just can't believe this game man like this guy tells me that he's a noob but it's definitely not someone who's just came back and played some Kane's Wrath after a long vacancy. Got these hammerheads here. It is, even though he's got like 100 million slingshots, it doesn't matter. Zone heads. With those heroic zone troopers in them, are going to be too powerful. I c and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just evacuate them uh, for the uh, heroic zone troopers. Because he's got no anti-infantry, so if I just de evac the zones, then... He won't have anything because slingshots don't kill infantry. Well, they, they do crush infantry, but heavy infantry, they can't. 
by the way, play watch patch 1.03 if you don't like the fact that slingshots crush infantry. Because CGF has made them kind of useless in that way. One thing I don't like about specialized units such as slingshots is that they they just don't uh, have any purpose besides killing air. But yeah, here we go. All these zone troopers are heavily ranked up. He's just going to throw in the GGs soon. He, me and him were just talking now about this game. Because the, the way that this game started from start to end, you would never imagine this. I don't know, guys. Uh, was I exaggerating over this? For me, in-game, it felt like such a, an amazing game. I, I don't think... I mean, if I had played or done one decision differently to what I did, it would have been over. I mean, granted, he could have made a couple of Firehawks and won the game easily when he had the chance, but uh, he didn't read the situation. Didn't didn't uh, think for a second that I could be going for zone heads. Because it's not something you see every day. You see a couple of hammer heads, which are easier to stop. But zone heads, man, that damage is just insane. So yeah, even though he's got all these slingshots, it doesn't matter. I've got the APCs, which I called in with the Bloodhounds. Those slingshots are getting absolutely massacred, and that's going to be GG. So, that's the game. Okay, so... You guys think it's uh, excess blood? Everyone's saying it's Dimitri, but I can't remember if I had a game like that versus Dimitri. Man, that uh, hammerhead micro at the uh, airfields was absolutely clutch. 20 minutes there. <sighs> Plenty of action. You can see by the uh, unit's uh, graph that we was up and down throughout cast my game and your game on rift oh yeah i could do that uh yeah we'll go ahead i'll go ahead and do that so yeah here's another game between me and drive we're on tournament or tiberian rift look at that uh tiberium there that's fixed in my 4k mod it glimmers and whatnot like it did 10 years ago but for some reason it bugged and yeah it's fixed now cool cool so yeah on the right hand side, we can see myself playing as a GDI. I'm going to be GDI over here. My opponent drive on the left hand side. These were some pretty uh, good games that we had this day. Uh, though I did get a bit tilted in the end, but usually when I get tilted badly, it means I'm pretty on point in that uh, session. Because I cared about losing, and if you care about losing, then that means that you want to win. Which is never a bad sign. I did play an epic game versus space on Crater, and I was really annoyed that I lost that game, despite it being like the best game of the year. That game I had it all: mutant marauders, B thirty five transports, uh, shadow teams, rigs, like the whole lot. Okay, so honestly, this game was played. Uh, long enough that I long enough ago that I don't recall every single thing that happened here so you guys know as much as I do besides you know the obvious at the end but you guys don't know the outcome of this game you don't I can tell you what happens but you you won't know what ha uh, the outcome is now, GDI versus Nod, it's important that you scout early on with a Pitbull if you can't get the rifle scout off as GDI. But I do manage to get a glimpse of his war factory there with a the rifle. This will allow me to go for uh, three harvesters and a fourth. Because as GDI, if you make a Pitbull first, you're stalling your fourth harvester. If you make a pit after three, then your eco is much better to place down a third refinery and go from there. So there is a big difference, in my opinion going pit first and pit after three rev of three harvesters a lot of nod players uh, try to anti-scout the gdi player for that reason with militants at the start uh, i don't know if it's worthwhile as gdi going for extra rifles just to guarantee the scout against uh, nod but nod really don't have to worry so much about rushes coming from gdi unless you're playing against green zero who does like to go for uh, pit Orca, as we saw in that Eclipse series, which uh, Cyber, I'm not sure, will cast. It was a pretty good series that uh, Green Zero played against Eclipse. The first one, that is. The second series, uh, Eclipse just didn't do so well. Everyone has their ups and downs. 
So I'm going to go for a couple of people. See, there's nothing really uh, out of the ordinary thus far happening. I know Drive pretty well. He knows me pretty well as well. He's going for a double war factory. Actually, did he go for two or is this just on one? Yeah, everyone seems to be going for this uh, bike spam on one war factory at the start. Not sure if he did it on four harvesters. I didn't pay enough attention there to know. But it makes you think that he's going for two. I can't get a scout in his base. And what his plan is, it seems to be to anti-scout me and make me overreact. And I think I did. I think I made a second war factory here while he's just going to pop down a fourth refinery. So that's maybe that. What that's what that's for. By the way, terrible building placement for myself because... I don't have enough space here to separate a fourth harvester, four halves, two buggies, five bikes. Yeah, that's what Futurama does as well. He does it most games. And it works quite well. You wouldn't think it would, but it, it does. Now, my my question is, if, if GDI does that, wouldn't it be better for GDI? Because they've got the stronger pit bulls. Who knows, right? Uh, Green Zero's Orca slash pit bull tactic may... Uh, surprise you if you uh, do that thing on four harvesters I'm not sure Orcas man they're really really strong versus bikes they just one shot those bikes and you, you look at the bikes uh, tool tip and it says strong versus aircraft like they're clearly not they need to be upgraded with tip core they're mostly harvester harassment units until tip core I tried to kite with uh, zone heads against that uh, imposter let's just say, from the last replay I casted uh, in another game against Black Hat and the zone heads, even though I was on the edge of his uh, bike's range, the bikes were constantly getting shots off with Tibcore. I'm not sure if the bikes have more range of Tibcore, but they seem to bug less, as in the, the range, they don't miss as much with a Tibcore. Okay, so Drive, uh, he tried to do a decoy army there, felt that he didn't need to, and in fact, did he? He decided to use the decoy army on these two, maybe to try and get a one click off. You know, he's not vanilla, so his, he'd be better off decoying his harvesters if he wants to get the one click off because those are stealthed and they're much less likely to be killed. You wouldn't get them killed by harvesters, that's for sure. Though they are slower units, so he wouldn't get the instant gratitude, let's just say, of the one click. He'd have to wait a little bit. I remember not seeing this flame tank map for some reason. I think I was a bit distracted. But uh, Rifle Squad does reveal that one there. It's in the top of the map. This is what Bike Rush used to do to me back in the day. Is this a replay? Yeah, this is a replay, man. There's nothing wrong with casting replays, is there? Laser turret's coming down. Drive talking in the chat. If you spam like seven pits uh, after four halves and your opponent goes to War Factory as Nod, you usually have more units to counter this at the moment. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. The, the second war factory, the first initial wave of that second war factory would be less effective, that's for sure. Flame tank comes in here. I don't think it would have mattered because these refs are clearly not spaced enough apart. So he could have killed both refineries there. So Dry fortunately didn't get both of my refs. I'm very thankful for that. Bice coming in here, but this singular zone trooper for some reason just killed every single freaking unit here. These zone troopers have so much DPS. I've Here's myself calling in the zone trooper for myself. Uh, I do this all the time with the uh, zone trooper drop pod. I think I've become a bit too predictable now, but I'm getting... Um, I'm evolving this strategy now by making slingshots and upgrading tungsten shells. Because I'm going to get this countered by venoms. So if you... Maybe V35 ox event, uh, slingshot into your opponent's uh, expansion with your zone troopers. And that has... Tungsten, you could just blast all the Venoms out of the sky and keep the Zone Troopers alive because the Zone Troopers have uh, power, sorry, jump jets. So they can somewhat escape the Venoms while you kill them all with a slingshot. This Zone Shop can be more OP than two rev click. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's GDI's one click. It took us years to find this one out. I did this years ago, 2016, I started doing that. And the first time I won a serious match against it was against Wookie Bert in a in a tournament. I was GDI versus Nod, and he couldn't kill the Zone Troopers in the expansion. 
like it was Jug v uh, Marv, Avatar, Marv, you know, the middle fight in the regular tournament rift and all of his harvesters in the back were just getting popped by the zone trooper drop pod. I did this versus bike in the end as well and it worked great. You know, when I first started playing Kane's Rock, everyone said, oh, the zone troopers are bad. CGF told me, oh, Leaf, just make rocket squads. Three rocket squads are better than three, one zone trooper because my stats say so. Well, your stats don't consider it like the abilities that the zone troopers have. They have scanner packs, which allows them stealth detection. They have insane range. They can kill stealth tanks in like one shot. You know, missile squads are hopeless against stealth tanks, right? He doesn't consider... It's not just what the stat sheet says. Okay, so drive running into my base with these Gorman tanks, Matt Scorp. Uh, buggy is insanely strong to deal with. I don't know how to contend with it uh, against Nob because I always fear of stealth tanks if I try and go mass hammerhead and stealth tanks just absolutely annihilate hammerheads. Try keeping some militants in his base, probably anticipating that I'll go for another drone trooper drop pod because the cooldown on that is pretty low. I've got my mother out here, a new portrait. I want to do a 3D render of this in like a 3D program, but I need some time to figure out how to do that. I mean, it's all, it's it's probably good enough as is, but I really want it to be a little bit better. Match more like what they've got here. Okay, so these Scorp tanks, I was, uh, you know, he could have just uh, bypassed my army, gone up to the top of the map. I'm splitting my Pred tanks off here. Because I, I think that I'm going to get hit there by his Scots. But he decides instead to chase this Mammoth tank. Which has so much health. And I actually popped a lot of these tanks with it. Uh, stopped to shoot the ones that are low. You know, these ones are probably so low that the rifle Scots can finish them off. But the Mammoth tank will get a nice amount of damage here. And I'm glad that he did this. This will also give me time to uh, get my response out. Which seems to be just Predator tanks at the current time. I've got a Marv up in the top of the map. Uh, Drive has nothing to contend with this. I'm not sure if he just lost the Marv or something, but uh, if he had purchased Imp coils, he could have just uh, dealt with that quite nicely. For some reason, he sold his Tier 3. So sending his Tier 3 off to accelerate his expansion here with the refinery, but he should have gone for EMP first. Like if you're going for, uh, if you want to sell your Tier 3, uh, then get the upgrades at least because those make your Tier 1 units so much better. So the Marv, uh, I can Marvish this tip field even though if I lose my whole harvester, I it doesn't matter because I can just Marvish this Tiberium and get myself a quick boost of income. Drive with this Redeemer, going to clean out my initial tip field. Uh, my my base goes down there. MCB is a bit exposed. I do have laser fences which double armor of uh, buildings. You get double the armor and when you repair it's basically twice the repair rate because it's twice the armor and it repairs at the same speed because it's a percentage based repair on the on the health not the armor so it's an insane support power for 500 bucks uh, you should basically fence everything that you uh think is important like e even if you're not in danger of losing your tech center you should probably just laser fence it anyways just in case it comes under fire because it does so much okay so I'm pulling in these uh, laser sculpts to the bottom fields just so I can buy myself a bit of time so I can get some hammerheads out I'm thankful the drive allowed me this because he doesn't have a tier 3 and that means his only option would be to go for venoms but he's uh, actually not he's going for uh, does he only have a singular war factory here, man? No, he's got double war factory. He doesn't have a tier three. He hasn't scouted my aircraft transition yet. I'm not sure what he's doing currently. He has his redeemer back out. Uh, he knows that my MCV is still around. He's lost his, t his third field though, so he's gonna be leeching Tiberium. And I'm aware of this as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a zone trooper down here. I think this is why I did this, to try and like force those harvesters back for a little while. So I can stop this spam of tier one units, which as Nod can be very lethal. And as in that last game, zone troopers are kind of my last ditch attempt at 
coming through with a win because it's kind of hopeless without them here. I'm losing everything. Uh, the Redeemer, I had no vision of this area. The Fog of War is a thing in this game. And he cleans up my Pred army. That's basically all I had on the ground besides the Marv, which is heading to the bottom because there's like a full tip field here of Tiberium. Zone heads are out and that's going to be terrible news for Drive. He's got no anti. I do scan the ground just to see if he's got stealth tanks because to my knowledge he doesn't have... He still has an MCV and he still has his tech center. So I'm paranoid about stealth tanks, but I have to take the risks and try and get as much kills as possible because I lost my whole army. So even if he has stealth tanks, I need to try and see if I can kill as much here as possible. It's good that he doesn't though, but because that means that these buggies are going to be basically useless. And I feel that as GDI, you need to make some pretty big micro errors to lose uh, hammerheads against uh, buggies. Do pull this one back. They were expensive units, these, and for some reason my hammerheads don't want to move. Uh, I remember this this game, my hammerheads, they didn't want to follow orders half the time. In one of the most recent patches, I think, no, it was R15, the combat support airfields were given three drones to repair aircraft. Before that, there was only two, and I thought that was really bad. Uh, they have low health, these anyways. He could probably just one-shot that with the amount of rockets, of course, that he has. Drive's going to just uh, mass a bike buggy now. He knows I have four hammerheads. That's all I have left. There's a couple of harvesters still for me. I don't know if I'm leeching the bottom field. I think I'm taking the top field. Um, he's doing the same, but I don't have any stealth detection to stop those harvesters. Would have been nice if I had a pipple there. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty big engagement. I thought I had the game at this point. In my in my video, I thought, hey, this is this is GG for sure. But yeah, uh, I I was a bit overconfident, overstepped the mark. He used his ration, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if he did that thus far. He doesn't have tip crawl on those bikes, thank God, because any one of those shots would have need be needed to kill the hammerheads. No APM for me because I feel that it's not really needed. It's the zone troopers in there that are doing the majority of the damage. Even that heroic zone is going to be enough to like kite the infantry that he's got on the ground after. But as you know, kiting is insanely hard. Uh, it's something I like though. I feel if you use zone trooper, head, zone trooper hammerheads on a constant basis, you could be an amazing player at uh, kiting units. You would know exactly when to turn back. And it, it's... A unit that's worth uh, using a lot, I feel. It's one of those units that's like the stealth tank. Uh, can vary significantly player to player. Because of micro. And I like that. Units with high skill ceilings. Are just what I like. Hammerhead's going to go back to base. Uh, this one's pretty low on health. I don't want to lose that because there's heroic zone troopers in there. And that's uh, going to be insane for him to contend with. I can't evac them and put them on the ground because of the Redeemer. He's still got that Redeemer alive. I've got four Hammerheads, three left. A singular War Factory. I'm just pumping out Predator Tanks at this point. I should have sold my Space Command up link a lot sooner and my Tech Lab considering how I'm just content on spamming Preds currently. All this bike buggy does get destroyed. And damn man, this is... Really taking its toll for drive. He's got nothing much now. He's still continuing to pump out this bike buggy. Um, I would have expected him at this point to go back for an MCV. But uh, he obviously had other ideas. Thought that he could just do it with this. I mean, if I were in this position and I was seeing my opponent like micro these hammerheads and sniping everything down about losing anything, I would go back for an MCV ASAP just to get an air tower down and a couple of venoms. The drive's going to hope that I make micro mistakes. Thus far, I haven't. And I'm kiting these bikes here. As you can see, instantly those bikes just get totally shredded. Heroic zone troopers. Man, i got like doubles heroic zone troopers. There's nothing but bike buggy left for drive. The Redeemer, man, that is going to go down really quickly. There's two heroic zones in there. That's a shitload of damage. And here's the mistake that I didn't want to make. And I even asked these hammerheads to pull back as well. Now, it wasn't that bad. I do escape one hammerhead. How much health did this have? Did the game... The game uh, was fortunate to me. 
almost died that one, but no, this one unfortunately is going to suffer the same fate. Damn it. That's going to leave me just a singular hammer hit there. I, I don't know, understand how I kited all that bike buggy and then I lost two hammer hits just like that. He had bugger all bike buggy there. Like a handful of units. The Redeemer almost died. So, drive. He does get a bit lucky there, not gonna lie. But uh, I'm lucky that he didn't build a war an MCV and go back for Venoms. Now I do have one hammer here, here so my micro has to be absolutely flawless at this point. Because it's not even full health either, and as far as I know, this isn't even... Yeah, this, this is all I've got pretty much. I'm spamming Predator Tanks behind this, as I've always been doing this game, but... I have to be laser focused on this hammerhead because I will get it taken out if I'm not careful. The hammerhead, I don't know if it bugs sometimes with the zone troopers. It does seem to not fire sometimes with the zone trooper garrison. I think it depends on the terrain. But yeah, I'm going to repair that one up there. I've got a couple of predator tanks back at home, zone troopers. And this tip here for me to leech as well, that's basically a full type room field at this point. Neither one of us seem to have tip difficulty because we've been leeching uh, from either field while letting our home fields regrow. Drive can just keep spamming this bike buggy for days. Um, he could again get the MCV out. His Redeemer does live though. But again, if he goes for an MCV, I, I have the opportunity to just go in with my Pred army and just kill him. So, you know, if he didn't have the bike buggy that he has here, I would have just pushed and I could have just won the game. Zone Troopers taking out Harvesters here. These are really good. Look at that stealth detection, man. The, the range is like a pit bull. If bug something under Hammerhead on the ground, yeah, it does have a tendency of bugging a lot. So Drive's going to get some repairs on that Redeemer bike buggy. Not sure what Drive's doing. Maybe he thought that there was the Hammerhead down here. He doesn't have any upgrades besides lasers on his buggies, which are the real damage dealers to the hammerheads. My hammerhead here getting repairs, and I'm not using all three drones, because, you know, Bike, for some reason, likes to use three drones to repair his vehicles and air, but it makes no difference. One drone repairs the same as three. It's just good when you have a bunch of units around the war factory and you want a specific one to be repaired. Yeah, it's handy for that. But besides that, I wouldn't bother. Hammerhead, steel kiting units, man. This singular unit is all that I have, as well as a bunch of predator attacks. Now, one thing I did not consider is the fact that when the enemy, the Redeemer, uses Rage Gen, these are hostile units, these pred tanks. Now, even though the Hammerhead air doesn't get affected by Rage, my tanks become hostile. So the hammerhead just turns its guns on them. I should have put my hammerhead on hold fire at the moment that happened. So maybe next time when I get raged, I should put my air on hold fire just so I don't blow myself up. I think that was a big mistake. So I lost a lot of my predator tanks there. And as you can see, his bike buggy is swelling in numbers. It's probably getting to a point of uh, me being unable to contend with this with a singular hammerhead. It's just one hammerhead currently. I mean, if I actually win this game from this point, uh, it would be Hall of Fame for sure. I think. I, I don't think there would be any uh, doubt about that. But it has to be absolutely flawless, this micro. Okay, so... Two bites go down there, but that's about the smallest victory I could possibly hope for. It is a heroic zone trip, which does have double the fire rate, but you're not really seeing double the fire rate because... He's micring really well. He's pulling back his force. Doesn't want to uh, chase these uh, zone troopers inside the hammerheads. And as you can see, it's pretty nerve-wracking, by the way, micring this. Because one error and I lose the game. It's like having a stealth tank. And that's your whole game. Man, these buggies just get shot down in a single volley by these. It's pretty insane. Predator tanks, uh, stray preds getting destroyed. That's a little bit unfortunate. And I don't even know how I was able to kill as much bike buggy as I did here. I only have one hammer hit, man. Like, that's insane. The fact that I thought I could win from this position is just absolutely insane. I'm not going to lie. These hammerheads, 
drive, man. He, he, I mean, even if I had that amount of bike buggy, I'd be like, screw it, I'm just going to kill the hammerhead. But it's not that simple. And the uh, Redeemer is actually a little bit exposed here. I could have got more damage dealt on that. Uh, more part of the tanks, which are basically cannon fodder for the uh, Redeemer and the bike buggy while my hammerheads try and deal the damage. There's this one with the heroic zone. In it. Ah, no, I just lost one hammerhead. Fortunately, it wasn't the heroic one. So I kind of lucked out there. There's a heroic bike there, though, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, look at that. Even from the heroic zones, that's tanked that damage. And... He's engaging the Pred tanks. He's, I'm trying to get the bikes here as well. There's a lot of those units that are low on health. You know, instead of selling my tier 3, I should have gone for Mammoth tanks because the Mammoth railguns kill the bikes in one shot, whereas the Preds still require two shots with the railguns, which is like having no upgrades. So Pred tanks are no different at killing bikes with railguns than they are with them. The Hammerhead's still continuing to deal massive damage here. Bike only has a handful of units left. Man, I was so freaking close to just taking this game with this singular hammerhead. Like, seriously, this was pretty insane. And then I just made the micro error. And I and just like that, just like that, man, I was so close. There was only like five bikes left. He had no eco left as well. The redeemer was low. I had a bunch of pred tanks so man it was so close this at that moment if the hammerhead had not died i was bringing in tiberium as well but unfortunately that singular hammerhead is what uh, i was banking on and really at this point he can just uh go around the map and take out all my harvesters predator tanks with the rail guns i learned by watching this aren't the way to go against bikes because they still take two shots. It's the same as just having no railguns, man. You may as well just make mammoth tanks, in my opinion. They tank so much more damage per cost. They're way better units. So yeah, that was a pretty good game as well. 25 minutes. I could have had it at the end. It would have been epic if I did. Like, really epic. But unfortunately, not to be. Zone heads. I guess that's the uh, <clears throat> conclusion I have to come to with this stream. Zone heads are awesome.